Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about DHCP snooping. DHCP snooping is very important concept from network security point of view. So this is based on the idea of DHCP. So DHCP is a protocol that assigns IP addresses to the clients and that is done dynamically. So instead of statically, we can configure some DHCP server in our network and then DHCP server can assign the IP address to these clients. And in addition to this IP server, this DHCP server can also give the default gateway information. Default gateway means if, if you want to send some information which is uh, supposed to be on some other network, then we need information about the default gateway. And in DHCP uh, protocol, this all happens using four messages. So the first message is, is the discover message and this message is broadcast by the client to find, it, to find out any DHCP server in the network. So if this needs any address, then this will be broadcast to all. And then this DHCP server will send an offer message and this offer message, it will it, there will be an offer for an IP address to the client. And then client will send a request message for the lease of IP address to it. And then finally, the server message, uh, sorry, the DHCP server will send an acknowledgement message and that acknowledgement message will finally assign an IP address to the client. And these all four messages are sometimes called the DODA process that we discussed in our previous video and I'm going to put the link in the description, description section if you're interested in that video. Now let's suppose that after these all four messages, the DHCP server has sent an IP address to the client, for instance, in this case, in this, to this client, and that is 192.168.10.1. In addition to that IP address, the DHCP server also sent the information about a default gateway. That is the IP address of this interface of the router, because once the client has the information about the default gateway, this information can be sent to other networks. Now, let's suppose that this user, any of the users, any, any of the users who needs an, an IP address, they send a discover message and that discover message is broadcast on the local network. So this will message will be sent to all the nodes here. And then this user after sending the discover message will be expecting some offer message from the DHCP server and let's suppose that instead of this some legitimate DHCP server, there is some hacker in the network and that hacker is going to plug in its computer there and that computer has some DHCP software there and this is going to offer, this is going to send an offer message to that client. So this is some hacker there, we call it a rogue DHCP server, which is not the actual or this is not the legitimate DHCP server. So this can send an offer message to the client and client is innocent, he doesn't know about any rogue DHCP server, but it has got somehow the offer message. So it will, it will receive an offer message and, and then it will send a request message to the DHCP servers so that that server can lease an IPv4 address to the uh, uh, to the client. And then DHCP server will send an acknowledgement message and after these four messages, this rogue DHCP server may have assigned an IP address as well as the default gateway information to the client. You see, for example, in this case, this user has received this IP address. In addition to that, it has received the default gateway information, which is this one. And you can see this default gateway information is not the actual default gateway, which is actually 192.168.10.2. But this time, this dog DHCP server has sent its own IP address, its own interface address as the default gateway so that the client can send all the information to this default gateway instead of the actual default gateway. So the rogue DHCP server somehow cheated there. And now let's suppose that what happens now, just let me remove these things. So with this default gateway, client has got the IP address. So now 
if this user wants to send any information so that information will come to the default gateway and in this case this is the default gateway for that information it means the user instead of sending that information to the genuine default gateway it is sending to this rogue DHCP server and now the DHCP server can send a copy of that message to the actual default gateway in this way the user can send the information but the problem is that instead of sending directly to this one the information is flowing from some other node so it means some other man in the middle is there we call that as the man in the middle attack and in this way this this is information is being compromised and this is not good and this is actually alarming situation from network security point of view now what to do so actually man in the middle attack means malicious actor a malicious uh, a hacker is going to eavesdrop on the traffic which is flowing from the user to the network now there is sometimes question that if there are multiple DHCP servers, so in that case client can receive offer from multiple DHCP servers. In this case we have two DHCP servers, so client will receive an offer message from both DHCP server, but it will accept mostly the offer which was received first. So for example in this case the DHCP offer message was received from this row DHCP server first. So the client just, just uh, got assigned the IP address uh, from this rogue DHCP server. Now this actually this is a challenge and uh, this challenge or this problem can be addressed using DHCP snooping feature on layer 2 switches and in this DHCP snooping feature what we do we actually configure the ports of the switch or uh, we, we classify the ports of the switch in trusted ports so if for example this is the trusted port we say this is our trusted port and normally we uh, uh, classify or we configure the port as a trusted port that port as a trusted port that is connected with the DHCP server or that is connected maybe with the other switches and then we also classify some of the ports as untrusted ports so it means in that case all the ports which are connected with the clients they can be classified as an untrusted ports. So they can be configured as untrusted ports. So once we have configured these ports in trusted and untrusted port, then let's see what happens to save our network. Now in this case, all the, all the uh, incoming DHCP messages will be monitored, they will be examined, but all the messages which are coming from this trusted port, they will be allowed. There will not be any so they, there will not be any any examination so they will this traffic will be allowed from this trusted port but for the untrusted part of this classification so so if the messages dhcp messages are coming from these untrusted ports let's see then what happens so now out of these dhcp messages if the dhcp message is for offer so if there is DHCP offer message or if this is DHCP acknowledge message then we know that these are the messages which are supposed to come from legitimate DHCP server or the DHCP server. So we'll say that if such kind of messages are coming it means there is some uh, bad guy or this is some hacker who is going to send uh, those messages and maybe uh, that DHCP server has been connected with some untrusted ports. Otherwise, you see, we have connected DHCP server to only the trusted ports, but these messages which normally flow from the legitimate DHCP server, they are coming from these ports. It means there is some problem. So that's those will, of course, those messages will be rejected. So it means those messages will be discarded. Now, Let's suppose that in from these on these untrusted ports we are getting the messages like a DHCP discover message or DHCP request message. So these messages actually come from the client side when they want to discover a request. So it means these messages are coming from the client side. So in this case from some clients. So in this case what we do, we receive the frame, and in this frame 
we will have a source IP address in the Ethernet header part and we will also have a client hardware address in the payload part of that frame. So client hardware address and the source, IP, uh, source MAC address, we will compare both of them and the MAC address and the client hardware address and the Ethernet header, they should match. So it means if they both are matching, then we will accept this, we will process it. But if there is some inconsistency and if, if they are not matching with each other, then that message will be discarded. And if they are matching, if this is a legitimate request, then we can assign an IP address to the client. For example, if this message was come, came to from, from this client, so that client will be given an IP address. And uh, after this assigning an IP address, this whole thing will be recorded in some database and that database is known as DSCP snooping binding database or DSCP snooping binding table simply. And in this table, we will record the IP address which we assign. We'll record the MAC address of that computer to which this IP address has been assigned as well as the interface, interface to which that particular computer is connected. So we noted the interface thing as, as well. So we recorded everything. So this is how DHCP snooping binding table is uh, created. And this way records MAC address, IP address, VLAN and interface information all there. And then on these trusted ports, let's suppose that if we receive the release message or the decline message, so we have discussed these four messages, but we didn't discuss this release and decline message. So for example, release message is like, for example, this is the user. This is the user. He requested the uh, IP address from the HTTP server. DHCP server assigned the IP addresses. And maybe at some time, this user may say that I don't need uh, this IP address. So I don't need any more this address. So it can release that IP address back to DHCP server and DHCP server can just uh, put that IP address in its pool. So there will be addressing pool there. It can take that IP address back and it can place it in the pool so that it can be assigned to maybe to some other user, maybe this one or anyone. So that release message will actually release the IP address back to the DHCP server. But now, for instance, this user or this hacker knows, so this hacker, for instance, knows that this user has got this IP address and this user, for example, as a hacker is going to send a release message so that that, that IP address can be released back to the server. So in this case, how to verify that this, this release message is coming from the legitimate or from the legal user. So in that case, Good. So in that case, we have this release message where we have the source address, we again have the destination address, but we have the DSCP snooping binding table. So let's remove this one. And in this DSCP snooping binding table, you see we have the information like we have information about the IP address, that IP address was assigned to a computer having this MAC address and that computer is connected with this interface, this for example, FA0 slash one interface. But we can see that the release message is coming from somewhere else. And specifically this message, release message is coming from interface FA0 slash two. But this IP address, which is for which we are receiving the message to release it, that IP address or that uh, message is using this particular interface. So it means this is not matching with the data, uh, with the entry in the snooping binding table. So it means this information or this message is not a legitimate information and we should discard it. So in this case, we can avoid this release message from some hacker. So which can actually disrupt that communication of this user or maybe this hacker wants that as soon as this user is going to release that IP address, I will send a request to lease an IP address and maybe I'll get the same IP address from the DHCP server. So there can be any reason for that. But we can save ourselves by using this DHCP snooping feature on the switch. So after discussing these 
um, basic idea about that. Let's uh, go through some of the steps which we need to configure this DSCP snooping feature on the Cisco switches. So what happens here, if you want to enable DHCP snooping feature on the switches, first command we need is IP DHCP snooping. This will enable DHCP snooping on the switch. And the next feature or the next command is IP DHCP snooping VLAN. So this specifies the VLAN number where, we, where, uh, where DHCP snooping will be used. So this number can be any number. For example, in this case, we have used number one this VLAN number can be any number and then we have the third command that is no IP DHCP snooping information option so this is actually to disable the insertion and removal of option 82 and this option 82 information is an additional security feature which is normally used with the DHCP relay agents maybe we'll discuss in some other video and then once we have used these three commands we will have a uh, we will have this uh, DHCP snooping feature on the uh, on the switch and with this all the ports which are on the switch for example in this case we can see these all ports will be configured as an untrusted port but we want some of the ports to be uh, the trusted ports so that we can connect our DHCP server there so for that we need to go to that particular interface for example in this case maybe if this is any interface like FA03 if you say FA03 this interface and then we issue the command at IP DHCP snooping trust so now that port will be converted to trusted port and we can see this is the different color there so this is now the trusted port after this command and with this simple configuration we will have DHCP snooping feature enabled on the Cisco switches and finally, if you want to verify this configuration, then we have this show DHCP snooping command by which we can uh, verify the configurations there. So that's it for this DHCP snooping feature. And I hope this video was a bit helpful. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope to see you in some other video. Thank you.